everybody. I'm Cheryl Jackson and welcome to our Heart to Heart special edition. Tonight we're going to be talking about foster care. May is National Foster Care Awareness Month and I'm so excited to have with me the CEO and owner of Adore Children and Family Services Incorporated, Ashley James. Hi, Ashley. Hi, how are you? Somebody didn't get the green memo, but we did. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Listen, I'm so excited about this conversation. Um, you know, we really don't know a lot about foster care. We just know what we think, right, with regards to it. But I really want to get into, you know, you know, foster care and what it really means and how we as uh, African-Americans and more people of color can be more um, advocates for foster care. So if mm -hmm. you're watching on YouTube, if you're watching on Facebook, I want you to share it on your page. Tell everybody tonight's heart to heart discussion is about foster care. So I'm excited about my sister, Ashley James. And Ashley, you are the CEO and owner of Adore Children and Family Services. How did you get involved in foster care? Um, so my mom actually started it about 10, 11 years ago now. Wow. Um, so, so we legacy. come, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and she actually is the program director, still an executive director of Adore. Um, so our family actually has a long history of fostering. Um, one of my uncles, he uh, went to school with my my uncle, and um, he was homeless. And so my grandparents took him in and he lived with them, you know, forever after that. Um, and then my mom actually was a school teacher originally and then became a lawyer. So it has 25 to 30 years of family law. So seeing kind of firsthand what happens in families with children being split up, um, being put into foster care, which also led to us having me getting a foster sister as well. So mm -hmm. it definitely came from a family history of doing that. And then when my mom moved back to DC from Texas, um, she decided she wanted to open up a foster care agency. That is so awesome. And you know what, it, We a lot of us in the African-American community will foster each other's family members, right? right? Um, but the idea of fostering, fostering somebody outside of the family is kind of like taboo. And I want to kind of dispel that myth tonight. But I love how families helping families. And when you look down the lineage of our family, we find that everywhere. Right. Um, and I love that you guys have taken it up as a passion and that this is legacy that you're following in your mom's footsteps to <laughs> uh, continue the whole foster care program. Now, tell us the difference between, well, let's just talk about what is foster care. Let's jump right in with that. Okay. Um, so foster care, essentially, if you were a foster parent, um, obviously, you'd have to do background checks and make sure, you know, your home is fit and suitable. But the idea is essentially you're bringing a child into your home. Um, they can be anywhere from newborns to 17 years old. Um, and the, the idea behind foster care is that while their parents are unable to take care of them at the time um, to provide them with care, with love, with support, because that in itself is traumatic, but we also have no idea what else they've been through. Um, but the idea is to help them in the interim because it is always the hope that you can reunify them with their families. It obviously doesn't always happen, but that is the main goal of the state is to reunify families. Now, tell us some of the services that you provide. Um, well, before we get into that, I do want to talk about the difference between foster care and adoption. Sure. Um, yeah. Um, so obviously like foster care is meant to be short term, though it can end up being long term. Adoption is when you are straight up adopting a child. They are, you know, your children forever. Um, and in that case, you know, there is normally no hope of their parents them you being reunified with um, your parents if you're adopted. Um, you can also foster to adopt. Um, so a child might be in the foster care system originally and as time goes on, as they become more part of your family and it's identified that they won't be able to go back to their parents or another close relative, um, often you might have the option to then adopt that child. Mm -hmm. As believers, we are, you know, advocates and oftentimes um, fight against abortion and we encourage, you know, uh, young women instead of abortion to do more of an, of an adoption or maybe foster care. What are your mm -hmm. what are your thoughts on that as, as a foster care agency? I mean, I think that um, everyone needs to make the decision that's right for them, of course. But I do think that foster care, specifically adoption, um, is is 
a good goal. You're giving the child a chance to live their lives and maybe be with a family that can support them. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's it's very sad to know like how many kids are in foster care system in general, which to go back to your point before about how it's so taboo to take children outside of your family, I, it's, it's almost even more important because if it comes to them going to a stranger's home, essentially that means that they don't have the support. And, um, you know, a private agency like ourselves, I think obviously state run organizations are great, um, but we're able to provide more services. We're able to be more hands-on. We're able to do as much as we can uh, to support both the children and the, um, the foster parents to make it uh, an easier transition, to make sure everybody, if they have questions, if they're having a hard time, um, you know, we work really hard to try to build community partnerships. It's one of the main things I'm focusing on this year. Oh, good. So that, you know, say we have a child who ends up in the foster care system and they're approaching 16, 17. And, you know, one of the things that happens is they don't have guidance. They don't know all the different options for their future. Um, I met a man recently who they started a, um, it's uh, Tuskegee Airmen Essentially Academy, where they're all black men. All of them have ties to, you know, grandfathers who were Tuskegee Airmen. Mm -hmm. And they take young children, um, mostly, you know, underprivileged young children and teach them about flying. Uh, when otherwise they would have no idea. And if they're old enough, they help them get their license so that they can become pilots. So it's our goal as a private agency and our ability, we have the ability rather um, to help support children above and beyond just giving them somewhere to lay their heads. Yeah, I I love that because I wanted to miss about foster children. And I know that statistics show that, you know, some um, will end up in jail. You know, we we looked at some of the profile of what a foster kid uh, is, and it's not always a good situation. But with right. you partnering with community organizations like that, giving them opportunity or equal playing fields like those that have two parent homes, I right. think that is amazing. I think you know, right. I think that's amazing, and so they won't miss out on society. And oftentimes, the success stories that come from uh, fostering, I'm sure, is something that kind of keeps you going. I'm going to jump ahead and I want to talk about some of those success stories. Let's first talk about some that, that hits your heart really good uh, uh, for foster care for children. And then we'll talk about one of the stories from um, parents that you may want to share. Um, well, I mean, in general, so we have a, a pastor, actually, that um, uh, I guess he came to door maybe five or six years ago. Um, And he's very active in the community, obviously, and originally was just fostering a child. Um, But then he ended up adopting. And it's amazing because, again, not only was he able to help this child, and and I don't think his original idea was not to adopt, but he had a home for this beautiful young boy. He was able to provide so much for him. And, you know, that's his forever family. And being, you know, the pastor of a church, he's also able to bring the child into his church and his community. Um, And I think in general, there's so many people more and more these days that you hear about them being open about their um, fostering experience. Um, In fact, just the other day, um, I was talking to like an Aflac insurance agent, Mm -hmm. and she came in and was kind of asking about our programs. And she's like, this is really amazing, because actually, I was in foster care. And adopted, and I am where I am because people opened up their home. So it is nice that people are being so much more open about it. So people, like you said, can see that their success stories and see kind of the importance of helping a child mm-hmm. um, succeed. Because, like with anything, if a child doesn't have guidance, if they don't know where to go, it's more likely that they might get in trouble or might end up, you know, in jail or something like that. So. Mm-hmm. That is so good. And, you know, I'm a youth pastor, so um, I know what it's like to to share your home. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, when you see a need, you just end up, you know, I'll take you for the weekend. And next thing you know, you've got them for the year. You've got yeah. them for the year. And I know what it's like and the gratification of seeing their success. Um, mm-hmm. I've got four children of my own, so I do know. Um, how it feels, you know, and then there's some, you know, there's some um, people who haven't had children and want the opportunity to raise children. This is a great way um, to foster. Do you have a a great story for a foster parent that, you know, I know those are great for foster children um, success stories, but any of the foster parents, you know, um, that kind of warms your heart of them being able to foster and then maybe even adoption. Um, 
Uh, yeah, well, so we have one woman, for instance, who um, her she never had kids. Um, and then she started fostering with us and the first couple of times she's like, Oh, I don't know if I can do this anymore because you know, it might've been a lot, a little rambunctious, some older kids. Uh, but she's been with us for years now because she, she did love it so much. And she saw like kind of the, she got gratification from it, but she was also able to help somebody. So every time she's like, Oh, I need a break. And then she's like, okay, I'm ready again. A few weeks later. Um, which I think is really beautiful. Yeah. Uh, and then to you, again, to your point, um, we do actually have a lot of people that kind of find their way to us and they might be in their mid thirties, forties, haven't had kids. They're very comfortable. They have a great home. They're like, you know, I'd really like to open up my home or empty nesters. Mm -hmm. You know, their kids are gone for a while and they're like, well, I have this space already. So, you know, kind of why not? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I want to open it up for our audience as well. If you're watching on YouTube or if you're watching on Facebook. If you have a question with regards to foster care, we want to be able to address that today. If you have a comment, maybe you were a foster child or maybe you are foster parents that you can share your story, we want to hear from you, you can leave your comment right there at, on Facebook and YouTube and we'll address it right here um, during the heart to heart discussion. Um, I love heart to heart discussions too because it's real life experiences of mm -hmm. what people have dealt with or what we're doing and uh, bringing awareness to foster care if you're just tuning in. So, you know, a lot of times when, you know, people don't want to actually um, foster because like you said, there might be a rambunctious child or some that comes with some issues or problems. And so it's always this taboo situation, like I'm going to get a bad kid or whatever. But let's talk about um, the difference between therapeutic foster care and foster care. When you talk about those sure. So therapeutic foster care essentially means that the child might have more needs. Um, they might have some sort of ailment, um, be it mental or physical, essentially. So um, so one thing when you become a foster parent, you know, obviously we want you to be open to take any age or any circumstance. Um, but, you know, we do kind of assess and discuss with you kind of what you're capable of, what you're comfortable with. Um, unfortunately, a lot of people tend to just prefer small kids, which is obviously great for them. But then you end up with older kids that um, we don't have as many homes for. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, maybe somebody has a house that's very well built or well equipped for a handicapped child or something like that. So when we go through the application process um, and you go through training, we kind of assess all of those things. So, again, we can pair children in homes that would be best suited for everyone involved. Got it. Got it. <clears throat> and so what's the typical age of a foster child? Um, so as I said, it could be anywhere from... Uh, zero to 17 um, in some states, not in Virginia, it's up to 21. Mm -hmm. um, and the average age is probably between eight and 10. Mm -hmm. Is it more male or female in the foster care system? Uh, I think it's pretty even. It's mm -hmm. pretty close to being even. Got it. Got it. And so what is the goal of the foster care program? Uh, to support children essentially to um, provide them with loving homes um, somewhere where they can thrive where they can kind of learn where they can feel supported because again all of these children are going through some level of trauma whether it's just being separated from their parents whether it's being exposed to drugs or gang violence or whatever the, a parent that passed away whatever the case is there's some level of trauma that these children are going through and so that's that's our goal to make sure that we can just provide a loving, caring home for them. Wonderful, wonderful. Now, how do you know if you'd be a great foster parent? Because first of all, I think that's a trick question because <laughs> when we become parents, we don't know if we're going to be good. I mean, I think you know. that's the fear is like, how do I know? I mean, how do I become a good parent? You just, you have to dive in there and just have the, the intent to be a good parent. And I, I'm I'm expecting that's the same as a foster parent. What I'll let you talk about it because you're the expert. But how yeah. do you know that you're a good foster parent? 100%. Like, again, you know, this might sound like cliche or redundant, but it really just kind of, it's about you having space in your life for this child, whether mm -hmm. it's in your home, well, in your home, as well as in your heart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but like you said, everybody's a different type of parent. I think my biggest advice for if you're to become a foster parent or if you're afraid um, is obviously when we license parents, we put them through training. 
Um, we give them different scenarios. And sometimes people will go through training and decide it's not for them. So it's not the case where you get licensed, you have no idea of, of the possibilities, and then you're just kind of thrust into it. We give as much training as you can. And then even going forward, say you go through all that, you get licensed. You know, always ask questions. You know, we always have on-call staff. You know, we're very open. My mom, who's the program director, you know, often talks to parents, even though she's not case managers, if they have any questions or they need anything. I think that's the biggest thing, just being really open about what you're thinking, what you're going through, so that we're able to support you and the child in like any way possible, really. That's really good. That's really good. And I love that as training because we don't get that as parents. We just <laughs> Right. Jump right in. So at least you know with foster care, you are going through um, some type of training to find out if this if this works for you. Um, right. Now, and if I was going to say, sorry, if you're in a state like Virginia um, where you have private agencies, it's also really important to kind of check out different agencies because there might be one that is better suited for you. Not all of them are as hands on, um, you know, state versus um, private, private as well. Agency. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, you know, you have different rules and regulations. So. And a door awesome. is, of course, a private agency as opposed to a state. Um, we agency. are. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Give us the difference between. I know, of course, one is government ran. Um, is, is the private one more hands on and more? Um, For us, we are um, because we are not, you know, ran by the government. Uh, we just have more flexibility. Yeah. Like I said, it, it mostly just allows us to be more hands on. Mm -hmm. Um, so we also have Adores Angels is our nonprofit, um, and that will be our adoption, um, leg, but we use Adores Angels to help us raise money or to like, we're doing a clothing drive on June 5th, um, so that we can get more things for children. So, you know, typically you might go to a foster parent's home and there's a stipend to help support the child. Um, but like when children come to us, we give them a bag. Sometimes it has a journal, it'll have pajamas, it'll have toiletries. Like we think it's really important to make sure that they have things that are their own yeah. from the jump. And then from that, you know, we do whatever we can to make sure that we can, if they need more clothes, if they need a jacket, whatever the case. So being private and having both the for-profit and non-profit allows us to, again, help the parent in every way. Um, you know, where, and when you first start an organization, everybody runs to maybe I can get some government assistance, which is fine. Don't get me wrong. Or even the, the state agencies you're looking for, what you could do in your state. But what I love, like you said, about private agencies is that if something goes that goes wrong in the government, say a furlough, you guys can keep going. You know, right. you still keep going as a private company. You won't stop or halt anything because of what Congress is doing or or anything right. like that. So I love the fact about private agencies that, you know, that you you could be funded by the community. And mm -hmm. because of that, you can continue to, the work that's done, even if there's a filibuster or if it's something that's going on. In, right. In so then part of our agency actually is we do also have a government grant. Okay. Um, and that's for uh, UC children. So essentially... Um, children that are coming mostly from south of the border, um, they are placed into our care. They're mostly residences, residential um, facilities, but some foster care agencies across the country um, where they come to us. We have a school for them. Um, so we place them with foster parents for 30 to 90 days while we are checking out their sponsors to make sure it's legit, make sure it's not sex trafficking or whatever the case. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and we provide them with education. We make sure they get all the medical checkups they need. We make sure, you know, they see clinicians that we have on staff. Um, so we do, again, have the, the government funded side that allows us to go even more above and beyond to help children who are in need and who are, have been through so many things. I love that. I didn't even I didn't know that you guys when you think about the border and you think about immigrants and the horror stories that you hear about the separation of parents and children um, to know an organization like um, like a door is amazing to know that you guys are assisting um, with immigrants. So let's go on. Um, there is a um, there's a chart on the website that really, really um, pricked my heart and it really just began to break down some statistics with regards to 
uh, foster care. So according to the 2010 census, talk about the number of children in foster care and foster to adoption and that particular chart. Um, and of course, if you're um, watching on YouTube or Facebook, know that you can go to the website. Of course, the website is scrolling down at the bottom and you can check out this actual chart that I'm talking about. It's adore-children.com. Um, and just look, um, you know, look, look up facts, you know, foster facts. But I want you to talk a little bit about that. The um, according to the 2010 census about the number of children that's in foster care and then foster care to adoption. Sure. So there, in the state of Virginia, there are approximately 5000 children in the foster care system mm -hmm. um, and over 400,000 um, across the country. Um, so as I said before, uh, the split between male and females is pretty close to even. It's about uh, 52 or 53 percent males mm -hmm. um, and then 47 or 48 percent females. Um, and then about half of the children in foster care um, are reunified with their families. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. And when you look at the statistics and the charts, it will it'll prick your heart to find out how you can help. Now, another thing that really pricked my heart was the profile of a foster youth. And you hear oftentimes, you, um, you know, celebrities who were foster care and who've made it and, um, you know, their success stories and horror stories and those that even have written about it or talked about it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, making awareness of what goes on in foster care. And growing up, we've all known someone who's been in foster care, right? Mm -hmm. And everybody's story is not a great success story. But when you are, you know, a person that really want to make a difference in a child's life, you, you really are making a difference in society. That's mm -hmm. what really pricked my heart with regards to this particular statistic on the chart, the profile of the foster youth. Talk, talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so I, I, I suppose as many would suspect, um, most of the children that end up in homes or adopted are Caucasian um, or white. So you end up with a lot of minorities who are kind of left in the system, um, which again, why it is so important for you know us black and brown people to really, really dig deep and kind of think about um, helping with foster children in one way or another, whether you're a foster parent or not, um, and that's what ends up happening. Like it does, it breaks your heart all the time where you see the statistics about foster children and so often you're like, oh, Asian kids or black kids or brown kids do this and this happens and they end up here and it's because people are not taking them into their home. So it's kind of our responsibility as a community, I believe, yeah. um, like I said, to do what we can. And it might not be being a foster parent, mm -hmm. it might just be support on both our spirit page and on um, our praise page. Of course, we're people of faith. And so how can we in our church assist the foster care program? How right. we, how can we as a church, you know, pick up children and, and take them a big brother situation? Um, we're going to talk about ways that people can help in the foster care system as well, because fostering a kid is not the only way that you can right. help, right? But we're going to talk about that. But I think that, um, I, you know, this platform is a perfect platform to present foster care because as believers, it is our job. And as a youth pastor, it really pricks my heart that we step up. I would always say to the church, because even some that some kids that are in two parent homes or that are in, you know, the home and they're doing well, we still need assistance. And so it takes a community. About, yeah, it takes a, a village, <laughs> right? So and when you so when you're talking about um, building youth ministry. Um, you know, taking on um, an initiative in a foster care program is probably going to be a great way to grow youth ministry, to be a, to make a difference and make an imprint and be light in the midst of that situation. I really love that. But if you want to check out this statistic or this chart that I'm talking about that pricked my heart, <laughs> go to adore-children.com. Uh, that's the website for uh, Adore Children and Family Services um, where you can find out more. You just go to uh, Foster Facts and get all the facts. That's what I love about this heart to heart is that we're not speculating. We've got people like you who can give us the facts, right? <laughs> who can really break it down um, for us. Um, so talk about that, ways that we can help outside, not just, you know, I know that, you know, fostering is, is of course the number one way or one way that we can help, but talk about mm -hmm. other ways that we could help. Sure, so, you know, what you just kind of touched on, you know, one thing when my mom first started the agency, um, our pastor who ended up adopting, we often would host trainings. We were a small agency. So we would host trainings at the church. So that's one way, opening up your church doors. A lot of the people, 
Yeah, a lot of the people statistically, um, at least in the beginning, uh, uh, where we would get foster parents from were through the church. Mm -hmm. um, so it's that, opening up your facilities, uh, you know, inviting a foster care agency in to talk to your congregation, to, you know, your groups, whatever they may be, into your workplace. Um, another way which uh, is definitely different from all the other things that are like on our website that we'll talk about is incentivizing people to foster, even with like maternity and paternity leave. For instance, for us, we offer maternity and paternity leave to people who are both having their own children, mm -hmm. to people who adopt, but also to people who are bringing foster children into their homes and they need a little extra assistance. And that's an indirect way, but it, it again, it's letting people know that, hey, it's okay to mm -hmm. do this and we want to support you in helping the community um of course for us you can adopt um donate mm -hmm. um either money or clothing people donate toys um old suitcases uh a plethora of things um that we take uh we've had people who have um, donated toiletries for us to give to the kids because again we give them uh, a bag when they first come so they have all of their own personal stuff yeah um, you can volunteer, of course, um, either just with our agency or another um, in the office or when we have events, you can come out and do that. Um, so I know that we're setting up on Amazon an Amazon wish list of things oh, that, you know, children in our care need. So you can go on there and buy directly if you don't want to give money or if you don't have something that you can give. Um, so those are the main ways. And of course, just telling everyone about it. You know, even if you aren't able to do any of those things, if you go tell a coworker, go to your congregation, share this, this link, I'm, word of mouth is always one of the biggest ways for people to learn about foster care and, and what they can do. And will you guys still do that? Will you, if pastors or ministry leaders would want you to come to ministries or to churches or even um, small organizations or whatever organization to talk about foster care? Um, yes, we do it all the time and are actively seeking churches uh, to go to and to speak to people about um, everything, what's going on, what they can do to help. And that's another way to help. Like if you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook and you want to do something to make a difference um, in a child's life, then then present that to your ministry leaders, present that to your pastors, or maybe you are a pastor that's watching and just want to bring awareness to foster care. Um, this is a great month to do it. It's foster care awareness. Right. Month. <laughs> so this is a great time um, to do it and bring awareness um, to it. And, you know, you know, to a foster kid, of course, is, ama is an amazing thing, but maybe that's not you. Maybe you can't do it for whatever reason right now, but there are other ways that you can do it. But maybe you're like me and my husband and becoming empty nesters and just still want to love on a baby, you know, mm -hmm. or love on some children. Um, so are you fostering as well? Or did you, um, I know you said your, your mom and you guys kind of were in foster care with family members, but um, are you, did you, have you ever fostered? Uh, I have not fostered myself, okay. <laughs> but um, it will most likely be something I end up doing in the future. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then because <laughs> you're helping so many kids right now finding placement, you're kind of like fostering them now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because we are also expanding our agency. So my focus has okay. been finding ways and places to expand and, and making sure that we're able to support, you know, our foster parents, our foster children, as well as our staff. Um, mm -hmm. So that they can do their job so all right so if you're on facebook if you're on youtube you have a question regarding foster care maybe you have a testimony about it we want to hear from you go ahead and put it in your comments and we'll share it here so that everybody can see it on all the platforms right now we're broadcasting from praisedc.com we're broadcasting from our radio one dc youtube page and our facebook page so we want to be able to share your comments and your questions no question is crazy but don't get crazy <laughs> <laughs> um, so foster care. I don't know if we talked about the, the the different things that you do at Adore. I know it's more than just child placement, right? Like I know you have other things that you do. You do there. We talked a little bit about some of the things that you do, but can we talk a little bit about that again? Uh, sure. So most of it um, is, is around the foster child in itself. Um, so like most agencies, you know, they'll just place children 
um, into homes. So we do, again, as much as we can to support the family. So whether it's um, a foster parent support group, um, whether it's, you know, we help take children to their appointments, be it medical um, or to see a therapist or things of that sort. Um, one of the services we hope to provide in the future is to have um, like a, a nanny um, or a babysitting um, leg to both help people who aren't fostering, but specifically are foster parents. Um, and again, it's not a service so much, but we are looking to build more relationships with community partners mm -hmm. um, so that we're able to help give the children guidance above and beyond right now or for their futures and things of that sort. Awesome. So I know you're in the state of Virginia. So do you <coughs> just service Virginia or is it across the country? So we're just in Virginia, mm -hmm. um, but currently we're working to expand to Texas, okay. Pennsylvania and California. Got it. Got it. <laughs> so if it's a, a parent that's in Maryland, that's interesting. Can they still come to a door to find out and, more information? Well, yeah. So our doors are open to anyone who wants information about it. Um, mm -hmm. We are not able to license anyone outside of the state of Got Virginia. Um, yeah, every state is different. Um, but if people just have questions or want to know or maybe want help trying to find another agency, um, we can do as much as we can to help them. Okay. That's, and that's a great question because I was like, I'm in Maryland. I'm going to call a door, but that's not what I'm supposed to do. So, <laughs> <laughs> that's great information. So again, if you have any questions, we're going to wrap up in just a few moments, but but I don't want to uh, let Ashley go if you have um, if you have any questions. So Mamatu, hey Mamatu, says, how true is it that you cannot post kids of your foster kids on social media? Can, is that true? Um, so I don't know legally whether or not you can but i would not encourage it because you don't know what their circumstances are you don't know where they're coming from what's going mm. on um so you kind of want to respect their privacy or maybe the privacy of their parents i see people more often um, posting about children they've adopted um mm. more so than foster care but yeah i i don't know that i would encourage it and or if you were posting i wouldn't be like oh hey you know this is a child that I'm fostering, blah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like putting all of their business, for lack of a oh, better you know, phrase, out. I never out. thought about that. I, you know, yeah. if they're in my home and we're taking pictures, we're just going to flick it up. But I, I never thought about that. But right. And stuff that you learn in training, I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Awesome. And and that's even different. I mean, so from, again, my mom started the agency 10 or 11 years ago. How different is social media now? Um, like, it's it's completely different. So yeah. there are a lot of things, I think, along the way that we're kind of figuring out or learning because you don't think about it until it happens mm -hmm. or it's happened to somebody else. And then you kind of have to be like, oh, you're right. This is probably a bad idea. Um, but especially like the children coming from the border, you definitely would not post them online because you don't know where they're coming from or if people are after them or whatever the case may be. Um, I just don't think it's a good idea. I just adore children. I do. It's so grat self gratifying. Um, you know, my family laugh at me, the ministry laugh at me because when the babies are, are performing or the children, you, I get teary eyed because you watch them grow up into these exactly. amazing human beings. And every small accomplishment is a great venture, it's a great feat. And so I'm, I'm admonishing anyone who's on our thread who's um, questioning, or maybe you're a single mom and you still want to have an opportunity to raise children or a single father, or, you know, mm -hmm. maybe you're an empty nester like me, or maybe you and your husband, you know, have put career first and then are not now able to have children. You can, you can literally, you can literally find out more information at a door and uh, make this an option. So Linda Knight, hi, Linda Knight says, how long is the process to adopt a child? Uh, so that's a really good question. Um, I think it varies. It has to be case um, by case, I'm sure. It could be a few months. It could take a year or more. It kind of just depends on what state you're in, if you're doing it through a private agency, if you're doing it through the government, where the child's coming from. Um, you know, you could uh, decide to adopt a child and then when their parents can test it, like the, it, there are quite a few variables. Um, and so you that. said Adore Angels is the adoption um, arm? Yeah, so we're getting that licensed as we speak um, mm -hmm. to adopt. So through us at the moment, you can foster to adopt, mm -hmm. um, but soon we will start doing straight adoptions. 
I love this. And I love that it's African-American owned. I really do. And that is generational. Mm -hmm. Um, So guys, if you're in Virginia and you're interested in fostering, if you're interested in adoption, if you're interested in helping, even in this arena, I'm going to admonish you to reach out to my my sister, Ashley, (laughs) and uh, and those that are at Adore uh, Child, Child and Family Services. Um, because this is this is a great this is fertile ground. This is great information. And of course, if you're not able to, you can always donate. You can always find out how you can volunteer, how you could be a part of what they're doing. I think this is amazing. So even though I live in Maryland, I think I still want to help at a tour, right? I still want to please do <laughs> stay um, in touch and stay with in relationship because I just think this is an amazing organization. And so thank you for choosing Praise 104.1 and Spirit uh, 1340 for getting this message out for our heart to heart. Yeah, I mean, thank you so much for having us. Like you said, it's really important to us and has been with my family for a while to make sure we we do what we can. And, you know, so many of us uh, have the ability but are scared. Um, so, you know, again, if it's not to become a foster parent, even if you just have questions, um, want to help in any way, you have an organization where you are able to help with um, you know, helping us support children and figuring out their future or donating books. Uh, that's always an amazing thing, oh, right? So- yeah, anything like that. I mean, the more we can work together as a community and as a village, the more children we can help and have all these success stories and, and, and do away with the poor stories. So Linda is asking, and this is a great question, is there an age limit to foster a child? Uh, for the parent, no. Wow. Wow. Just if, if they go through the program and go through all of the because, um, you know, big mamas still love these babies and they still might have a lot of love in their hearts to help. with. Yeah. Them. And again, when you go through the process, it's it's mostly just that you're able to take like, you have the space, mm-hmm. you know, you pass the background checks. Um, you have the ability uh, to kind of you're mobile, moving around, things of that sort. Um, those are the important things that you're able to actually support and help the child. That's what's important. And, you know, we talked about, um, you know, sometimes uh, the, the challenging child, but it, is it a way that you guys vet the foster parents like before they go? Is it a way that they, there's a screening process to know uh, what's going on in their homes? What's, you know, about their yes. background as well? Yes. So when you first come to us, again, we have an application. We do the background checks first up and we do training. While you're going through training and all of this, we have our case managers that will do home studies. So they'll come to your home, make sure that there is a proper bedroom for the child to have. There is a separate bathroom, you know, make sure you have the space, make sure, you know, everything about your home is, um, I guess, agreeable to having a child. Mm -hmm. Talking to the parents, figuring out, like I said before, you know, whether you're capable of dealing with a child that has more issues or might have some sort of ailment, whether you are able to deal with a newborn or, you know, an older child, like we go through this entire process and it's ongoing. So it's not just in the beginning before we license you, it's continuously. You will have home studies, whether or not you have a child in your home or not, just to make sure that you are still in a good position to bring a child into your home. And and then, like I said, when the child is there, um, your case managers will come often. Uh, we're in touch. You are always able to get in, in touch with us. Um, we have an on-call system. So at any hour of the night, if something goes wrong or you need help, you're able to reach out to us. You know, if you have questions or issues, um, we do foster parent support groups. Um, and just in general, we're, we make ourselves available because what happens too often is people decide they want to become foster parents children are in their home, they do have a tough case, and then they never want to do it again because they felt Mm -hmm. uh, isolated, like they didn't have the support. And and that's what we think is so important. It's important to support the child, but it's as important to support the parent um, so that they are able to continue to do that and so that they don't feel like they don't have anyone on their side. I think this is such great information. I'm going to wrap it up. I think we've touched as much uh, basis as we should, as we could. But mm-hmm. before we go, if there's something that, that we haven't talked about that you want to share, I'll give you final um, comments and final thoughts. And then we could close out. But I think this has been great. Thank you to um, those who've been watching on all of our platforms tonight and those who've had questions. Uh, you still have an opportunity to ask a question, but I do want to give you final thought before we close out. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, again, thank you for having me. I think this is amazing to have this platform. Again, if you have any questions at all, you can reach out to us by going to our website, adora-children.com. You can give us a call at 703-582-7304, or you can email us um, at info at adora-children.com. Um, no question is a dumb question. <laughs> um, I often myself respond to our, our info um, email account. So if you just open your homes and your hearts, <laughs> you know, it takes, it takes us to help these kids. So. Absolutely. I think this is such an amazing organization for it to be generational, for you to, to take up your mom's mantle, even as she's still working in this um, organization. I think this is so awesome. What a thank great you. legacy this is. And um, again, thank you for choosing us to um, to present this platform for National Foster Care Awareness Month. Um, we pray that something we said during this heart to heart pricks your heart to want to help. Um, for those who are watching on all of our platforms, I pray that um, it has pricked your heart to, if you can't foster, do something else. Um, thank you, Mamatsu. You've been awesome. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for your questions and for your interaction. I really, really appreciate that. Um, and um, so if there's, um, you know, I pray that something we said that's, that pricked you to, to, to reach out to a door and to any other foster care agency, wherever you are in the world, um, to make a difference in the lives of our children. And I love this, Ashley, that you said, especially for those of us that are black and brown, we need foster families. We need help from those that are in that organization. You see the statistics and you see the number of, of us that are in it. And then she talked about immigration, those that are, um, you know, of other nationalities. We need your help. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, again, we're, you know, we're Christian based, so we really don't promote abortion. And so where are these babies going? That, that where they're having these these children that either go into adoption or they're going to foster care. And so we need to step up and help. Ashley, I appreciate you tonight. Thank <laughs> you so very much. Again, go to adore-children.com or call the number 703-582-7304 uh, to find out more information in the state of Virginia, how you could be a part of Adore Child and Family Services. Thank you. This has been great. <laughs> That's going to do it for us tonight on our Heart to Heart discussion. I'm Cheryl Jackson. Make sure you join me for the midday show tomorrow. All right. 10 to 3 Eastern <laughs> Standard Time right here at Praise 104.1 and of course 1340 uh, WYCB. That's going to do it for us tonight. Good night. Good night.